Hello! Today we're going to talk about Fourier transforms, data in the frequency domain, and why acoustics and vibrations people like me care about these things so much, and why you should care too. Let me start with why you should care. It turns out that many physical phenomena are periodic in nature. For example, let's consider a pendulum that swings with constant period. You probably learned in physics class that for small angles, the angle of the pendulum, or equivalently the displacement of a point at the end of the pendulum, traces out a sine wave, something like this. In this instance, we're moving the paper down while we have a pen attached to the end of the pendulum, and it traces out a sine wave. The same thing is true for other physical systems. If you take a wheel, that is rotating at a constant rate and attach a point to it, the height of that point traces out a sine wave. What's more, if we trace out the horizontal position of the point, that also traces out a sine wave as a function of time. And it's not just circles. For a point traveling around an ellipse, the horizontal and vertical components still form sine waves when we plot them against time. The only difference here is that now the vertical component has a higher amplitude than the horizontal component, even though they still have the same frequency. Sine waves can be used to describe relatively complicated trajectories as well. Let's take this figure eight shaped curve. Again, the horizontal and vertical coordinates trace out sine waves as functions of time, but now the frequency of the vertical component is twice that of the horizontal component. So scientists and mathematicians figured out pretty early that periodic processes can often be described by sine waves. In fact, in the early 1800s, Joseph Fourier showed that any periodic signal can be written as a sum of sine waves. Here's an example. This is a sawtooth wave. Now, this doesn't look anything like a sine wave, but it actually can be expressed by a sum of sine waves, a sum of pure tones. Here's what the pure tones look and sound like by themselves. And here's what they look and sound like when you add a few of them together. Now I hear the musicians saying that it just sounds like someone is playing a chord on an out-of-tune piano, but Let's add in a few more of those sine waves, and we'll add them a little bit more quickly this time. Soon you don't really see or hear a collection of sine waves anymore. Instead, you hear a different sort of buzzy, annoying sound, which we know as a sawtooth wave. This example took about a hundred different sine waves, but you can see that the sum approaches something quite different as we add more and more of the sine waves into the mix. Now, what if we want to go the other way? What if we start with the sawtooth wave and want to find the set of sine waves that we need to add together to reconstruct it? This is where Fourier coefficients and Fourier transforms come in. Essentially, a Fourier transform breaks up a signal into a sum of sine waves.
each sine wave is at a different frequency. Instead of looking at the amplitude of a signal as a function of time, we look at it as a function of frequency. In this case, these colored lines are called the Fourier coefficients of the sawtooth wave. Of course, the real world doesn't run on nice, clean functions that are easy to analyze. Our signal instead comes from noisy, complicated data that passes through a bunch of equipment. There are a lot of places where things can go wrong. You can understand most of the common issues by understanding an important component that's in virtually all modern acoustics and vibrations measurement equipment, along with your phone, an analog-to-digital converter. An analog-to-digital converter, or ADC for short, is an electronic component designed to take an analog signal, usually a voltage, and convert it into a digital format that can be stored and analyzed later. Their electronic components can be a little tricky to understand, but their effective operation is pretty simple. Imagine you have a signal that's a function of time. In this case, I'm trying to record a 2 hertz sine wave with a 3 volt amplitude. The ADC can be thought of as a grid that's superimposed over the analog signal. The grid spacing in the vertical direction is determined by the number of bits in the system. These are the number of discrete values the ADC can output. In this case, I'm using a 5-bit system, which means I have 2 to the 5th or 32 bins to work with. The ADC can go up to a maximum of plus or minus 5 volts, which means the 32 bins evenly span the whole plus or minus 5 volt range. The horizontal spacing is determined by the sample rate of the system. In this case, I'm taking 100 samples per second, or a 100 hertz sample rate. The ADC records each box of the grid that the signal passes through, one box per time step. If the ADC is doing its job correctly, the sampled signal looks a lot like the analog signal. Unfortunately, things can go wrong. Let's say our analog system comes in at a 5.5 volt amplitude instead of 3 volts. Now it's higher than our highest bin and lower than our lowest bin. The ADC then just maps these overload errors to the highest and lowest bins. This error is often called clipping. Instead of looking like a sine wave, the sampled signal looks closer to a square wave. Here's an example of how clipping can corrupt a signal. We'll use music as an example, but the same problem can exist anywhere where you have an analog to digital converter. Here's a recording without clipping. Aside from the obvious problem of someone playing a Bach cello suite on a viola, it sounds pretty good. Here's the same recording with some issues due to clipping. The clipped version sounds much more like our sawtooth wave, with lots of high frequency content that has been introduced due to overloading the ADC. We can also get the opposite problem. Instead of the amplitude of the signal being too high for the ADC, it can be too low. Then when the grid gets superimposed on it, the signal only uses one or two bits. This is called a quantization error, and it's just as bad as clipping. Let's hear how quantization error affects our recording of a viola. Here's the original, which was recorded with a 24-bit system, which gives over 16 million different discrete values for the signal to be. Now here's the same signal with a 12-bit system. Depending on your headphones, you might be able to hear some degradation in the signal. Now an 8-bit system. Most of you can probably hear the extra noise and annoying sounds creeping in. Finally, let's hear what it sounds like with a 4-bit system. Now the signal can only take 16 discrete values, and it's severely distorted and no longer a good representation of the original signal. The last important issue with analog-to-digital converters is called aliasing. 
instead of a 2 hertz sine wave, let's say we are trying to measure a 55 hertz sine wave instead. Something funny happens when we use the ADC to discretize the signal. Instead of the sampled version looking like the analog version, it looks like a sine wave with a much lower frequency. This is because the analog signal has too high a frequency for the ADC to measure at this sample rate. Let me give you an audible example of the trouble aliasing can cause, and I'll also give you a visual representation of the Fourier transform of the signal at the same time. First, here's the original signal. Now, here's the signal with a significant amount of distortion due to aliasing. Well, that's it for today. I hope this has given you a good appreciation of the importance of Fourier transforms and some common pitfalls in measuring dynamic signals. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.